Now, this is a film all about me. The Robin. Cock Robin, Robin Redbreast. The Anglo-Saxons used to call me the Ruddock. But whatever you call me, I'm the best known and most loved British bird. In fact, I'm the official national bird. Yeah. Mind you, not so very long ago, people used to do some very strange things to robins. Just have a look at this. There, you watch. There they are. And a couple more. Now, what's he doing? Oh, you see? Very strange things. Here, yeah, there's a catch in it. Oh, dear. See what I mean? And all this used to take place on Boxing Day. It was a ritual to catch and sacrifice a robin in the cause of peace and goodwill. They used to do it to wrens as well. The bird was killed and placed on a bier decorated with holly and gold braid and carried round the village. And they only stopped doing it in the 1920s. So you see, it wasn't so very long ago, was it? Oh, funny people. What a way to carry on, I ask you. No wonder us robins were shy woodland birds. Well, I mean, carried round the village on a beer, lying on holly. Now, oh, nowadays, we've got a much better relationship with you people. I'd even go so far as to say we've got you very well trained. Yes. Now, let's see. Must be time for elevenses. <laughs> and any minute now, that window is going to open. And you'll see, see, see what I mean? Oh, how's that for training? Oh, lovely. Oh, hello, we just dropped one. Oh, lovely, it's my favourite. Mealworms. Mmm, delicious, delicious. <laughs> hello, there's the thrush. He's a cousin of mine, you know. He's, of course, a lot of other birds eat here as well, and we do need a few extras in the winter. Hello, hello, what's she bringing out now? That looks like Christmas cake. What a good idea. Yes, nothing like a bit of Christmas cake. Oh, hmm. Yeah, that's the trouble, though. That's the trouble. You always get this lot. And they spend more time... Oh, no, that was a rook, wasn't it? That was a rook. I just saw a rook. These starlings spend more time squabbling than they do eating. There's the old chaffinch there. Hello. Oh, what's... Oh, you don't get many rooks in this garden, I'll tell you. There's a sparrow there. Well, he can shift some cake, that one. Look at him, more like a gannet. Oh. Another thing you get at this time of the year is the Christmas card. And ever since the early 1860s, when commercial cards were first produced, who is it you see all bright and cheerful on the front of the cards? <laughs> well, it's me, of course. <laughs> well, I did say I was Britain's most popular bird, didn't I? It's a funny thing, but you don't see... Hello, what's he having? You don't see many starlings on Christmas cards. A couple of hours now again. Oh, and did you know the Victorians called their letter carriers redbreasts or robin postmen? Because they wore royal red frock coats and crimson waistcoats. There were all sorts of weird and wonderful cards. I'm not potty about this one because I think there's a robin in that cage. <laughs> Look at this. This is ridiculous. Yes, yes, all present and correct, sir. Kicking his legs about is disgraceful. Beagles are quite popular, too. Little choir there. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I think he must be an Australian robin. Still, with all these singing robins on cards, they're no substitute for the real thing, are they? Nah. Another place you'll always find a robin is in a churchyard. And sometimes inside the church, on the stained glass windows. You see, there is a legend that our red breasts are a result of a robin removing a thorn from Christ's crown. Yes, uh, my great-great-grandfather posed for that. Mm, very handsome. Yeah, those aren't robins. 
Those are angels. And the other thing is, churchyards usually have lovely nest sites. Thick yew hedges, old walls, ivy-covered trees, and lots of very good song posts. Now, that's extremely important, that. And did you know we're always supposed to sing sweeter on Christmas Day? Nice thought, isn't it? Now, I don't live in a churchyard, so just let me show you where I do live. I don't usually fly as high as this, but I thought you might like to get the general picture, you see, because you'll find robins in almost every garden in Britain. Funny, isn't it? Hmm, nice area, though. Now, this is more my usual altitude. And here we are. Are you ready for this? That's it. Number 132 Acacia Avenue. This is my home. Complete with good food diploma. Now, I can show you around properly. Oh, and if I stop now and again to sing a bit, don't worry, it's just the way that I establish my territory. And if I pause and sort of listen, that's so I'll know where my rival's territory might be. That's why I said song posts are very important. Now look, that pear tree there, that's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, you see, nice and high, and I can make sure that all the other robins can hear me. Now then, this is all mine. That's the back view of the house there. Yes, it's all mine. Hmm. This is it, all this garden. And we don't stick to your boundaries, you know. No, because I go through this garden and over this lovely thick hedge there and into the neighbouring vegetable patch at 134. Super, isn't it? Look at all that. Great. Oh, and there's another lovely song post. That's a sort of border post, that one. It's right on the boundary. There is uh, one snag with all this, though. There he is. Got four legs and a meow. Oh, that, uh, that's where we had our nest last year. Yeah, and there's the song post. What did I tell you? Lovely May tree. I'd better just give that cat a quick burst on the banjo, I think. Yes, seems to have done the trick. Goodbye. Oh, did I say there was one snag? Yes, there is another. That's him. He's from next door. Excuse me a minute, I must just uh, see him off. A few vigorous displays of the old red breast. A few battle cries. I should sort him out. <sighs> you know, these territorial skirmishes are very important. I mean, I've got to defend my little bit. Because there's my food supply to think of. My nest site. I mean, I've got to protect all these in order to raise a family. Hello, what does he want? Come to see fair play. Or perhaps he wants to play the loser. Yes, and we all know who that's going to be, don't we? Oh, look at him. Oi, you, oi! Get out of it! Really? Huh. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Thinks it's Wimbledon. Now, ignore the cat and get him with my match of the day. Well, I'll just give him another quick burst. If that doesn't work, I shall try the head swaying, I think. Oh, look at him. Look at him. He's trying the ticking and the tail twitch. <laughs> no? No, he's not having any. Right. I shall give him the head swaying. And if that doesn't do the trick, I shall just have to jump on him again. Oh, dear. I can't have this coming in my garden. He's a fool! He is a fool! Still, I'll say one thing for him. He's got guts, that Robin. Mm, he's seen enough. Hello, he's back. Well, that's done the trick. For today, at least. Ah. Hmm, hello, what's this? Reinforcements? What is this? Not another one. Oh dear. Here we go again. Yeah, although, not sure. You know, one of the problems with robins is that the male and the female are identical. And at first, you can't be sure if it's a male who's going to beat you up, or a female with designs on your body. Because the lady does the choosing, you see. And I think... 
I don't believe. Oh, yes. In this case. Oh, I'm in love. Oh. Oh. Oh, dear. Well, I'd better give her a conducted tour. Show her the other occupants of 132's garden. Yes. She'd like that, I'm sure. Would you? Well, then, uh, where should we start? Um, oh, I know. There we are. Start from here. What do you think of it? That's a sparrow, in case you weren't sure. It's a high-level dining area. <laughs> oh, she's lovely. Hmm. Here, here. I'm engaged. I'm engaged. Yeah, and I'm hungry. Oh, dear. Oh, that? oh that's a blue tit. That's uh, one of the acrobats. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's another one. And that's, that's the great tit. He's a bit bossy now and again, but he's very good at the upside-down peanut bashing. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Do make me laugh. Oh, dear. Look out. Look out. Here they are. No wonder they call them vulgaris. <laughs> Let's have a little snack while I'm waiting. Mm, quite nice, that. Mm. <laughs> Look at this. Look at him. Call that singing. Great scruffy thing. Get out of it. Mm. You know, all these other birds do compete a bit for food, but they're not much trouble when it comes to nest sites. Yes, and the missus will choose where our nest is going to be. Although they can build in some funny places. I mean, they found nests in old kettles and old cars, in a Bible, even in the body of a dead cat. Yeah, that's funny, that, isn't it? Hmm, quite a nice thought, though. <laughs> the body of a dead cat. Good heavens. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There he is. That's Harry. Now, Harry, he left this old watering can in the hedge, you see? I suppose he thought we might nest in it. Well, in any case, you can usually find a nice grub inside it. Oh, gotcha. Mmm, nice. <laughs> there you are, dear. Got to keep your strength up. Now, once she's decided where the nest is going to be, she'll start collecting materials. Now, these vary enormously, but generally, the nest is made from dead leaves, grass and moss, and is lined with hair and fine roots and sometimes even feathers. I thought she'd decide to build in the hedge. What a sensible bird I've found. Hmm. What a lovely place, honestly. Could you ask for more? Oh, oh, that does look cosy. That's going to be lovely, dear. Smashing. Now, all this feeding of the female from the start of nest building helps enormously in what is called pair bonding. And I give her all sorts of things. Insects, larvae, fruit, seeds, worms. Especially worms. She does love a nice worm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, what are they? Oh, I know. Yes, hello. Yes, you see, they got the hens there, you see. That'd be very useful. Might find a few feathers over there and a few snacks as well. Yes. And we find a lot of our food on the ground. You find lovely things on lawns. You get ants, leather jackets, all sorts of delicious goodies. And then, of course, you get other people feeding here as well. I mean, you get the uh, blue tits. Hello. Oh, there's a cold tit. Don't see too many of those. See a lot of sparrows, though. Nearly as bad as the starlings there. Hmm. What do I see? What do I see? Oh! Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! I bet Harry put that there. I bet you, Harry. Hmm. Do love a nice worm. Yes, thank you, Harry. Oh, delicious. Delicious. Mm. Now what's she doing? What have you got? What's that? No, no, chuck it up, dear. It looks a bit unyielding. Hmm. That's the idea. Now, while the missus is getting on with all this nest building and egg laying, I get on with defending my territory. In fact, I spend about 60% of my life doing just that. Yeah. Hello. The wife's been busy. Of course, I did my bit as well. <laughs> we usually have five or six eggs and the missus does all the incubating. I mean, she'll leave the nest about three times an hour, you know, wander about, have a feed herself, but usually I feed her most of the time until the eggs hatch. And that takes about 14 days and then we both take over feeding duties. Yeah, the, the reason I don't help with the incubating is because I've got this deal going with Harry, you see. He digs the worms and we eat them. <laughs> Good old Harry. Yeah. Mm. Of course I do uh, find a few myself at the bottom of the hedges. 
No, but Harry, you see, he keeps trying to keep this pair bond going between him and me. He will keep going like that. You watch, you watch. See? Got a lovely pair bond, me and Harry. Mm. But as I say, I do find my own as well as what he gives me. No, Harry, no, Harry, uh, no, it's no good, uh, it's no good doing that when she's settling down. Oh, dear. <laughs> Hope he hasn't disturbed her. You better chuck it over here, Harry. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, I thought the dog was going to fetch it then. Oh, no, 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 he's packing up. Oh, must be tea time. Well, I'm blowed. Didn't time fly? Yes, there they go. There they go. See you later, Harry. You know, I do love standing on a nice warm spade handle. Especially when I can see Carol coming with the mealworms. Oh. Of course, she must have come out of a big egg. Hmm. Come on, dear. Don't hang about. Look at those. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Just get a couple more for the missus. Mm. <laughs> yes, that'll do. Here we are, dear. There you are. Yep. Yes, all right. All right. Yes. Now just don't look down to snatch, dear. Good heavens. <laughs> Hello. Look who's here. Yes, here comes Trump. Better sound the alarm. The old tick tick, the tail twitch. Tell everybody what's occurring. Hello, what's happening now? Oh, look at that. Look at that. She's eating the eggshells. I mean, how's that for recycling? Eating the eggshells? I'm a daddy. Oh, I'm a daddy. I'm a daddy. Yeah, he's probably had the operation. Oh, well done, dear. That's all I can say. Honest, marvellous. Well done. And here we are, a few days later, and they're already beginning to get their feathers. Look at them. They're beautiful. Yes, now we're both going to be hard at it, bringing food to the nest. And at the same time, I shall still feed the missus so that our pair bond stays strong. And I shall do that. Look, there we are. I shall do that until the chicks are a week old. Hey, do you know? Do you know, somebody worked it out once. No, it wasn't us because, I mean, we are far too busy. But they worked it out that the parents visit the nest once every two and a half minutes. Yeah. And they reckon that an average family of five chicks got through about 700 caterpillars in a day. In one day. You think of that, you gardeners, eh? That means that each chick had about 140 caterpillars or grubs. You know, think of that. 140. Fantastic. Didn't seem to want that, did you, dear? Never mind. 140 caterpillars or grubs per chick per day. Quite incredible. Quite incredible. Then I'll make your wings ache. Of course, they weren't all enormous grubs. I mean, some are smaller than others. I mean, they weren't all as big as this one, for instance. I mean, if you could feed them with that, they wouldn't eat 140, they'd probably just eat 14. Now, come on, just, would you? Thank you, get hold of it. That's it. Down it goes, lovely. Now, the obvious end product of all this food is a faecal sac, which we remove from the nest site so that we don't give away its position. Come on, then. There we are. Hmm. I wonder how the neighbours youngsters are getting on. I've an idea they're a few days older than my lot. Yeah, I think I might pop over and have a look in the shed over there. Oh, yes, there they are. Oh, hopping about. <laughs> yes, they're not as pretty as mine, of course. Yes, and I bet they smell of paint. <laughs> they're quite large, though. They'll be on their second brood soon, I shouldn't wonder. And then some pairs have three broods. Can you imagine? There's even a record of one pair having four. Oh, the mind boggles. The mind boggles. Four broods. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, that's enough of next door's kids. I'd better get back to feeding my lot. They'll be starving. There 
there you are. There you are, right, number two. Who are you? Open wide. That's a good boy. Hello, hello. That neighbour's cat, you know, he never gives up. Ah, where's he now? Where's he got to? There he is. Yeah, hello, he's heard something. Dear me, dear me, they're making a lot of noise. I think, I think I'd better go in the back door. Yeah, now, eat that and keep the noise down and I'll go and distract that moggy. of this. Yes, I don't think we'll bother with a second brood. Still, we'll see, won't we? We'll see. Keep it up. Keep pumping in the food. Taking away the sacks. It's non-stop. It's non-stop. Now then, who wants this? Come on. Turn <laughs> this. Try again. There you are. That's it. Now you keep spitting it out. That's no good. You're supposed to swallow it. That's it. Oh, come on. Now then, try that end. Ch turn it round, try, th try that end. You're no good at all. You're no good. Listen, you better have a go at it. Hang on, hang on. We'll try you, on the right, on the right, you. There you go. There. No, you're not, you're not managing at all. G give it here. Oh, dear me. Will we have a smaller worm, please? Yes, that's about the size. Take, take it in, will you? Oh, dear. Whew, quite exhausted. Ah, that's better. Yes, that's the one. That's the right size. Get it down, your son. Come on, what's he whizzing round for? Come on, then. Hasn't it gone yet? Oh, come on. Oh, yes, definitely winning. Definitely winning. The worm, I mean. Oh, look, eyes closed. Bliss. Look, just get a bit more. Go. Come on. Just try again, please. I'm quite exhausted watching you, I really am. You've been at it, has it? G ah, ah, that's my boy. Well done, well done. Keep the mouth shut or it might escape. Well, it's about two weeks before the chicks are ready to leave the nest. And then once they've gone, we do usually have another family. And our nesting season can be from late March up to June. And then of course, once the chicks have left the nest and they're creeping about, learning to feed themselves, they're in great danger from next door's cat. That's one of the reasons they're all sort of spotted up to camouflage when they're creeping about under the hedges. I'll look after them usually when they're doing that, while the missus is getting on with our second brood. And having mentioned the cat, you see, I mean, We've got owls to contend with, stoats, rats, I mean, they're all a threat. But it's reckoned that the garden cat takes 40 times more robins than any other predator. Imagine that, 40 times more. So you see, we've got to keep an eye on them. And keep distracting that moggy. Aren't they lovely? Little things. Now you see, just don't go mad. Walking about and fluttering, I'm coming. Well, get fed, but just don't make yourself obvious. Otherwise, it'll be off like a rocket. A great flash of white and tawny fur, and it's goodbye time. What have you got? Oh, doing well. Picking them up himself now. You can't eat leaves. No, you can't eat leaves. You're a robin. You eat worms. Ah, oh, silly. There you are. Have a worm instead. And one for you. One, two, three. Yeah. Where's the fifth one? No, no. What'd I tell you? What'd I tell you? Lie low. Lie low. Oi. Come in. Get in the holly. Mm. The holly, I said. Mm. What a twill. Have that and get in the holly. Look out! Oh, dear. 
Robin gave me a fright. That was a very close thing, that was. And don't forget, Robins don't live very long anyway. I mean, you are pushing your luck with that, Moggy. You won't see the end of your first month, never mind your first year. And then maybe about a month after the last of the chicks have flown, I start my moat. And that's about the only time in the year that you won't hear me singing. Because I've got to keep a very low profile, because I'm not quite so nippy, you see. Of course, if I was a continental robin, I should probably migrate south like those swallows are thinking of doing. Yeah, yeah, they'll be off soon. But most British robins stay put. The females might move away from the breeding area, either, you know, just locally or in some cases quite a long distance, but I've got to stay, I've got to defend my territory because there'll be a lot of this year's young robins who'll be looking for a place of their own. And I've got to drive my lot away as well. In any case, if I didn't stay, I mean, this poor lady here, well, she'd, she'd be up to her neck in mealworms, wouldn't she? And that would never do, would it? Never. No, of course it wouldn't. <laughs> my cousin, the, uh, the missile thrush, he helps out a bit as well. Yeah, in fact, if he, oi, oi, if he helps out any more, I might have to have a word with him. Really, look at that, it's as bad as the rook. I thought he'd never go. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I mean, after all, they are provided for me. I allow the missile thrushes and song thrushes to have one now and again, but there's no need to go mad, is there? So, you see, all in all, I'm very happy to be a British robin. I mean, there's the mealworms, there's Harry and the worms he provides, there's the protection by you-know-who, and... What? Oh, all right, just one. That's it. And it... Look, I said one, didn't I? God, blimey, he's a deaf thrush. Yes, the protection's very important, you know. Do you know, in France, they still produce cookbooks saying, this amiable little songster is eaten roasted with breadcrumbs. They don't say we get the breadcrumbs before or after. Yes, I'll stay here. I don't even mind the winter, because I've got my people trained, you know. I've even got them trained to plant shrubs that have got lots of berries. Hello, you must have cold feet, Sparrow. Not to mention the mealworms. Roasted with breadcrumbs, indeed. Here, yeah, talking of food, there's a very good recipe for a sort of pudding that all us birds adore. I mean, the sparrows, the tits, thrushes, robins, everybody. Now, what you do is to put all your bits of fat and bacon rind, etc., in a dish. And any old bits of spaghetti, if you've had spaghetti bolognese, bits of rice... So, no, just a minute. Just, hang on, I haven't finished the recipe yet. I haven't mentioned the currants and the raisins and, you know, chopped nuts and all that. Don't keep doing that because they can't concentrate on... Listen, you've got to have bacon rind, 